Ken from PressCats.com. In this episode, I'd like to talk about the differences between the RGB and CMYK color spaces. When should you use one instead of the other? And why even have two color spaces in the first place? Let's take a look. RGB stands for red, green, and blue, and is the format for video monitors, projection, web images, and most digital photography. RGB is an additive color space, which means that you add the red, green, and blue light to your black monitor to get all the colors. The more light you add, the whiter things get. RGB values are expressed as numbers between 0 and 255 for 256 possible values for each color. For example, you can get black, which is the absence of light, by having the value of each color at 0. You get white by having the value of each color at 255. In theory, that means that there are 16,777,216 possible colors with the RGB model. We can't distinguish them all, but it gives us a lot of flexibility. CMYK stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Well, the B was already taken by blue, so K will have to do. <laughs> I'm just kidding. K originally stood for key because the black plate used to be used to register the others in CMYK printing. CMYK is the color model for conventional offset and some modern digital printing. CMYK is a subtractive color model, which means that you subtract light from a white piece of paper by adding more and more ink. The more ink you put on the paper, the blacker it gets. CMYK values are expressed in percentages. For example, white would be 0, 0, 0, 0. Using no ink leaves the paper white. Black is a little trickier in CMYK because there are several ways to make it. You might try 0, 0, 0, 100 to specify straight black ink, perfect for clear, easy to read text, or 100, 100, 100, 0 for a black using the three other colors and no black at all. The problem is that too much ink on the paper makes it slow to dry and difficult to handle. Total coverage is a way of expressing how much ink you have on an area of your page by adding the percentages together. If you printed 100% of all four colors, you could get a total coverage value of 400%. In our previous example, we would have 300% coverage, 100% of each of our three colors. Most of the time, it's best to avoid exceeding 240% total coverage. With that in mind, let me introduce you to Rich Black. Rich Black is made using all four inks for a deeper black than is possible with K alone. At Press Cats, we prefer 60, 40, 40, 100, but there are different formulas at every printer. If you get your printing done somewhere other than PressCats.com, ask them and they'll give you their magic numbers. So now you may be wondering, if CMYK is used for printing, why even bother with RGB? Well, good question. The truth is that although CMYK is used for printing, it's really not that efficient for other jobs. It's rather limited in its ability to display all the colors possible in RGB. In fact, CMYK is only able to print around 60 to 70% of the colors you can make in RGB. Many of the most vibrant and bright colors simply cannot be faithfully reproduced in CMYK. RGB is vastly superior for color grading photography. It tends to be more flexible when performing color edits and less likely to introduce color artifacts. RGB is also the color model for most digital cameras and offers a larger amount of plugins in programs like Photoshop. By doing your primary color adjustment in RGB, you will be preserving as much data as possible for your final image. As a side note, when color adjusting in RGB, it is often possible to view your color values in both RGB and CMYK. This can often be helpful for achieving color balance, which I will discuss in another episode. After your color adjustments are finished, it's time to convert them to CMYK. Converting your photos from RGB to CMYK before printing is a must to ensure the best possible printed output. Sending an RGB photo to a press can have unpredictable results as the color conversion may differ greatly from what you had in mind. This conversion step gives you the ability to control and refine final color output, and it allows you the opportunity to spot potentially troublesome color issues before going to press. If after the CMYK conversion you see unsatisfactory color shifts, it is a good opportunity to do some final tuning. 
For these refinements, the CMYK model will work fine. In fact, using the Color Sampler tool in Photoshop will show you the exact ink values that will be used in your printed piece. That, in combination with the Selective Color tool, can allow you to dial things in perfectly. Logos are an entirely different issue. Oftentimes, graphic artists will design logos with spot colors for brand consistency. Spot colors, also known as Pantone or PMS colors, are pre-mixed to exactly match preset standards. As an example, Reflex Blue is a spot color you might be familiar with. When a logo that has spot colors is used on the internet or on a television commercial, it has to be converted to RGB. When that same logo is used in four-color process printing, it has to be converted to CMYK. All these conversions must be done with care so that undesirable color shifts can be minimized. For our purposes, that is going to press, CMYK is the model of choice. Before submitting your project for print, be sure all your photos, logos, background colors, and text are in the CMYK mode. Well, that's about it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. To download free design templates or for more design help, visit our website at www.presscats.com. See you next time.